Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, looks like we got a good group going here. So uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, my name is Amy uh, Marquez. I'm with the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Um, so the Chamber understands how difficult business has been these uh, last few weeks, not only on owners, but the employees and customers too. We know you may have questions about what other businesses are doing to keep their customers engaged and hope you will go away with a few ideas to incorporate in your business today. We will have time for a few questions at the end, so if you will submit those questions via the chat box on the side of your screen, um, please identify and specify if the question is for one specific business owner or operator. Um, if it's just a general question, then you don't need to provide a name. Um, we asked at this time that you keep yourself muted and your video off. Please help me welcome our first guest, Amy Wood, owner of Flint Avenue Marketing. Good afternoon, Amy. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and Flint Avenue Marketing. Hi, Amy. Thanks so much for having me here today to just chat with my favorite people, which is the Lubbock business community. Uh, so I'm with Flint Avenue Marketing, and we basically do all things marketing. So for small business mid and medium-sized businesses here in Lubbock, we do things like websites, social media, all those types of things. And then we operate as an outsourced marketing department for enterprise-level clients on a more global scale. Really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to watch a short video now. Great, thank you, Amy, for that. Now, help me welcome Andrew Zamora, owner of Racer Classic Car Wash. Welcome, Andrew, thank you for being with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about Racer Classic Car Wash and about yourself, please? Sure, I'm Andrew, I'm actually one of the owners. We have several investors that are owners with me. Um, I am one of the founders. Um, I guess this June will be around for 10 years. I've uh, been in the service business for much longer than that, but. Uh, we um, have been lucky enough through this all to be able to be open for exterior washing, um, which was good for our employees. Um, and uh, just kind of been making it day to day like you guys and, and certainly stuff, um, get togethers like this and meetings certainly help. So uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. And join us for a short video, please.
The Lubbock community has always been proud to support each other and our local businesses. You know, you always hear the idea here in Lubbock, you're lucky to live in Lubbock, and we're lucky to live in Lubbock. The local businesses are the ones that help build the Lubbock economy, and we're going to be the ones to help rebuild it when we're all through with this. This spring, Racer Classic Car Wash is supporting our neighboring businesses by purchasing 35,000 gift cards from local restaurants across Lubbock. It's very important for the community to stick together and support each other in these times of need, especially in small businesses. The support of Race Together is a big part of helping out the community. There's a lot of us around, and the more we help each other out, the better off we'll all be getting through this tough time. And this Race Together program is, is really bringing the community together and is just showing how much local businesses support each other here in Lubbock. During this difficult time, let's race together toward a successful future for Lubbock. That was great. Thank you for providing that for us, Andrew. Um, let's welcome Jay Jacobus. Jay is the CEO of Scarborough Specialties um, and one of our past chairman of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce Board. So welcome, Jay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Scarborough Specialties, please? Thank you. Appreciate it, Amy. Thanks for, for having this uh, get together. Um, I'm CEO of Scarborough Specialties. Um, we've been in business for 20, over 25 years now. And um, what we do is we're, we're a promotion, promotional products uh, company. We do marketing through promotional products, but we also do embroidery and screen printing and various other things that we can decorate customers or organizations' logos on in different products. That's great. Thank you. Um, and we'll watch a short video. great thank you so much um, again thank all three of you for being with us today and sharing uh, some insights to your businesses um, we will have a few moderated questions um, and if each of you will uh, then take turns answering the question uh, and then any feedback you would like to give as well or any um, suggestions or just playing off of each other that would be great so uh, with that we'll go to question one uh, so the first question, what has been the biggest obstacle your business has faced in the last few weeks? And what was the first thing you implemented to overcome this obstacle? Hey, Amy, I'll take that. So the very first obstacle that our company was challenged with was just being able to meet with people face to face. So much of what we do is collaborative our office is at the Innovation Hub at Texas Tech. And so we have all these great rooms with tons of whiteboards and coming together and just collaborating in those spaces is, um, is so much fun and it brings so much life to the projects that we're working on. And so the first thing we obviously, and we've always had video chatting, we've used Zoom and GoToMeeting and those types of things because our team is located everywhere. So we were good at that. The second thing that we implemented right away was um we talked to the team and just talked to them about building a remote work guide because our teams have been working remotely for so long we just have a lot of best practices there's some good knowledge there and so our team built this guide and we published it just as quickly as we could to help individuals and teams skip that learning curve of um, trying to work remotely and understanding like how to set up a good workspace, some trust building activities for communication and things like that. And um, I had my one of our project managers drop that link right in the chat bar so everybody can go and download that guide if you'd like. That's great. Andrew? Well, the first thing we had to implement was we had to stop doing interior cleaning, um, which so we would not, you know, be inside customers' cars um, and vice versa. So we went to completely exterior at all of our locations. 
Uh, biggest challenge was obviously we didn't need as many employees all the time. So our scheduling kind of got kind of thinned out, I guess, if you will. Um, and then of course, you know, masks and gloves and, and such. Um, but again, you know, the, the, although we were open, we, we have, uh, witnessed quite a substantial amount of decrease in, in volume and, uh, revenue for sure. Uh, just with people staying in. Good weather, all those starting to help. I think people are finally starting to get out, but uh, definitely impactful. Great, thank you, Jay. No, um, I would agree that the middle of March we saw our revenue just get chopped down sixty to sixty-five percent off of normal, and so I was kind of like Andrew right there. We we had to meet with our leadership team and come up with with a game plan of what what we thought we should do, and so that. That meant us not taking a pay. That meant us reducing other other people's pay or and or ours. And so that was a major uh, issue that that we had. The next thing that we really had to figure out was um, what are we going to do to be a viable company? Um, because we weren't going to make it the way we were going based off of our other business models. So pretty much overnight, we flip flopped um, what we were doing here. And so now we're not we're not necessarily a promotional products company or embroidery company. We, we have pretty much all of our machines flipped over to making those medical masks now. And that's allowed us to bring back all of our employees and, and be hiring right now too. And so that's been a, a great blessing, but boy, it was a, a scary start too when we never had done that before. Okay. Um, Let's move on to our second question. How many employees, and some of you may have answered part of this already, but we'll still go again. How many employees did you have before the pandemic and how has that changed as, today, as of today? What accommodations have you made for your employees? Uh, Andrew, you wanna start us off on that? Yeah, we've, we've lost uh, surprisingly very few since we've been able to kind of um, adjust scheduling uh, hours have been reduced. We've had a few that um, that did, you know, collect unemployment and 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 choose to go that route. Uh, but keep in mind that we have a lot of Texas Tech uh, uh, employees, and being that they are not having to attend, they've gone back home. So that kind of re reduced our staffing, especially you know downtown and it kind of helped with the balance of it. Uh, so um, we've, we've, we've witnessed very few, um, uh, a, very, a very little drop in our employees. I think I'm up next on that. Um, I think whenever this all started, we had 89 employees um, and then also salespeople on top of that um, that are not necessarily independent contractors and not employees. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we we had some layoffs at first, and and uh, and now we're hiring back. So we, I don't know the exact number right now, but I know that uh, um, we're, it seems like we're adding people this week pretty hard and heavy already. And so I would say we're probably in between 90 to 100 employees. So it's been good. It's been different here though because with the social distancing and keeping distance, we really have to watch how we do that. So. Um, even our, our showroom doesn't look like a showroom anymore. It looks more like a production floor and, and our, obviously the back ends too, just because everybody has to be spaced uh, so far apart. And then everybody in our office is wearing masks. Uh, if they're going to come in here and work, they, they've got to wear a mask too. Thank you, Jay. For us, we have, um, we had about 20 employees working as contractors before um, COVID. It's interesting, a, a lot of our customer base is actually the energy industry. So what happened yesterday has been a bit of a harder hit to our oil and gas clients. Um, sometimes when they have an extreme reduction in workforce, it makes sense to pivot their um, spend to instead outsource. It's, a, it's less expensive typically to outsource a marketing department than it is to hire you know, those types of skills. And so um, in the past, when we've seen things dip like this, what we've, we've typically seen an uptick in outsource, uh, you know, 
um, spend. So that's what we're praying for, that that will continue to be the case. Um, but yeah, as long as, as long as we can uh, see some upturn in energy, we'll be good. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, next question. Um, what is one thing that you have changed that you never thought you would ever have to do as a business owner? I think from, from our standpoint, it was pretty obvious that I've, I've never in my wildest dreams would have thought I've been selling medical supplies and PPE or medical masks or anything like that. And, and uh, over the past month we have, so it's, I'm trying to learn a whole new deal and, and figure out that new normal for us for right now, at least, and, and kind of pivot and make things work uh, proactively. Well, in general, I, I would say that just the overall actions or lack of by society has changed the way we look at, you know, typically I'll look at a weather pattern for the next 10 days and I can pretty much forecast uh, what we're going to do in revenue um, and how all that's going to turn out. And now this is just, it's completely turned that upside down to, uh, we, we've had some really good days and some really low days. So that's, it's certainly a challenge. Amy? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of that same, that exact same thing, just trying to figure out um, how to support our customer base, really, like how we can pivot some of their brands to be more digital, anything we can do to help them on the technology side to make that happen. As far as um, our, something I never thought I would have to do specifically, maybe like market toilet paper as much as we've had to i mean just like it's pretty funny to see how so many companies have utilized a roll of toilet paper in their marketing efforts just like as an extra hey come take you know take away from us and we'll give you a free roll of toilet paper to boot and i just like i never would have ever imagined that in all the marketing trending of anything <laughs> but that something so common that is normally so readily available would become such a, um, you know, such a powerful tool in marketing. And so that's, that's been different. Yeah. Thank you guys for that. Okay. Um, let's start off with, or let's go to question four. Share something that you recently started to keep your customers engaged and coming back time after time over the last few weeks. And how has social media played a role in this? So this is something, um, this is kind of my soapbox thing that I'm talking to as many businesses as will listen right now. It feels like a time of retreat. It feels like a time where we're supposed to, you know, just like huddle all our resources and kind of see where we are and ride the storm and see what happens next. But in reality, it's really a good time to encourage more communication with your customer base. Even if you've had to close your doors for a while because you're not an essential business or for whatever reason, now's the perfect time to really tap into some of your social media communication and putting out your story and not stopping to tell your story because you have fans, you have people in the city that wanna hear from you and they wanna know, you know, um, how you're doing and they want to hear like what's coming next and what can we expect like hashtag when this is over and so I just encourage businesses to use the time to also just put something out there if it's on social every day go on Facebook live or something and take opportunities to really communicate to your customer base because um, they miss you and they want to hear from you. Well, as you saw in the video uh, that you played just a bit ago, um, I had one of the investors about two and a half weeks ago, I guess, or business partner, give me a call on the weekend and, and had an idea of maybe buying some local gift cards to local restaurants that were having to be closed down. That was the weekend they were going to implement it. Um, and so we kind of all got together and, and got pretty aggressive about it and, and chose to obviously use social media to run a campaign for it um, and also ran it on local television, uh, traditional media. But um, it, it 
you know, it really wasn't, we didn't intend it just for, just to draw focus on us. It was really intended for them to kind of be partners with it. And I think it, the outcome has been even better than we thought. Um, obviously we continue to run it um, on social media. We, um, I don't know if many are aware, but we bought a, we acquired a company in Amarillo um, and we have two car washes in Amarillo and we did the same thing up there and they really, really, um, it really, really took off. And uh, to the point, on our Facebook page, I think if you can see, some people are like, well, I went through and didn't get one. And, you know, we just, if we can't catch them all, you know, they kind of get upset. But um, anyway, it, it's it's really taken off well. And, and and again, through social media, it's just so powerful these days. Andrew, that's an impressive idea. I'm impressed that y'all did that. Pretty cool. Um, I would think that we felt probably more in line with what Amy was saying, where uh, we felt the immediate need just to, I think people just want to be, cared cared about right now and they, they want that relationship and i think the worst thing that you start seeing is people hibernating in their house and and kind of almost getting depressed and so we made the initiative right out of the gate that first week just to make have all of our sales team call 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 not to sell anything just to say hey how are you doing you holding up okay your business okay how the kids all that kind of stuff and so i think that made a, a big difference and we had a lot of really neat stories come out of that because people just wanted somebody real to talk to in a, in a time of uncertainty. And so um, as far as the mask, that really was more of a digital uh, marketing as well as traditional that, that, that uh, helped us with that. But I, th I really think more than anything, just the personal contact and, and touching somebody and saying hi to them. I, I know I appreciate that in times like this. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, our last question. What advice do you have for your fellow business owners or operators who are looking to keep their customers connected to their business? I guess I really couldn't answer that if I didn't know kind of what the business was, um, you know, what they kind of did. I. We've always, as I'm sure all of you, um, you just have to do what you do well. Um, you know, there, we have a lot of competition here and, and long ago, we, we just made up our mind that we were gonna do it our way. Um, we may, you know, get an idea or two from, from, other, from other businesses that are in our industry, but, you know, really commit to what you're gonna do, what, you know, what you know works for you or what's worked in the past and stick with it. Um, there's always, you know, new technology and new things coming out that, that can assist in that. Uh, but really just, you know, it all comes down to just people and customers and your own people and, and treating them right. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, if you can create a culture like that, or at least try to, I think that would, that would advance you the most. Um, I would I would agree with that as well. Um, I think it's important, like in times like this, to be to be proactive. We all have the option of either sitting in the corner and feeling sorry for ourselves, or getting up and, and trying to make a difference. And so I, I would encourage people to be a difference maker. And, and, uh, and tr you know, I know it's I know we're living in a weird time, but, it, but it's also a chance for uh, for leaders to rise. And so I would encourage people to, to hey get up and, and make a difference. And if it's just calling people, that's a difference. You know, if it's whatever you can do, do it. If you can send a pizza to somebody, you know, just a family or whatever, that makes a huge difference and hopefully it'll get passed on. And then, you know, the, the other part of that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier is, I think it's, it is so important to be relational right now and, and uh, don't, don't hide behind a computer or email and expect a lot to happen. I think it's people want to hear a voice or see a face, and uh, I think that's important. And I want to mirror just both of those conversations exactly where we're coming from, too. It is very relational. People do business with people they like, right? And so they like you. They want to hear from you. And right now, because so many people are at home, they are consuming content at higher rates than ever before. Used to, you could, you know, put something out once a week, once a day, something like that, and, 
and that would still allow you to grow a bit of a digital footprint. But right now, because the consumption is so high, you really cannot produce too much content, blogging or um, you know, sending out an email, posting onto your social media, like I said, going live, those types of things. Anything that you can do to continually just kind of like share how you're pivoting, share about your business, and reach out to your customer base too and ask exactly, how are you doing? How's your business? How are you guys pivoting? You know, maybe there's collaborations. I keep thinking that in a time like this where, you know, everything kind of gets flipped over, it opens doors for creativity like never before. And so I'm really, it's exciting to see the ingenuity that people are coming up with. It's too cool that you guys, you know, stopped doing so much of embroidery and started making masks. You know, that is, that's the kind of pivot that when you move quickly like that, those are the businesses that survive. And I think with Lubbock, we have such a strong small business ecosystem that if we continue to support each other in these ways and host opportunities like this to share our best practices and what we're learning from our industry, I just think there's nothing but good can come from that. So just keep sharing and being transparent. And um, I think that's, that's the best thing. I think you're muted, Amy. I am, sorry about that. Well, thank you all for sharing again. Um, it certainly is an unprecedented time we're, we're living in. Um, and we appreciate, we appreciate all of you sharing today. Um, we have some plenty of time for some questions and looks like we have a few already. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel and Rachel's gonna ask you all those questions. Uh, between the three of you, uh, please feel free to jump in if you feel like you have an answer to that question. Rachel? Hello. I'm going to start us off with, um, I guess it's kind of more directed towards Andrew and Jay, but Amy, feel free to answer as well. Did you get a PPP loan to help with retaining employees? Yes. We did too. We, yes. we got a PPP loan. Okay. All right. And what would each of you suggest to the new Lubbock Economic Recovery Task Force for opening up more businesses in Lubbock? Well, that's kind of a catch-22 because if I have a restaurant, I'm going to want it open. Um, you know, I don't, I, I would say just kind of follow guidelines or, or kind of see what's going on around the country and what's, what's working for them. Um, I do believe that we're probably we have a task force that's probably pretty aggressive, which is good. Um, I'm for that, you know, rather than just sit, sit around and wait um, and, and then just kind of monitor it. And I think if everybody really follows the rules, um, you know, again, getting back to the point that we were allowed to be open, I can't really speak to that as say a restaurant owner or a clothing shop because that's, they were affected very, very different, differently than I was um, or that we were. And, and so, you know, I certainly want them to be open. Um, so I, I, if, if I had one of those businesses, I would probably really push for it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to answer that question um, other than I think we all just wanted to get back to normal as soon as possible. Um, and, and getting back at the, I kind of read that to the side of, of the PPP loan, if you don't mind. Um, we have, and I didn't answer earlier, 180 to 200 employees at any given time, um, and maybe a little over that now, but um, it, it, was, it was really, really good, and it will really, really help, and we will definitely follow the guidelines for it, um, and, and hopefully the, it does what the government is hoping it will do for us, and that is get us down the line in providing you know, freeing up income or freeing up money to be able to pay on, on other things um, other than payroll down the road. Um, but, you know, there, there are a lot of, of companies that did not get those. And I'm really hoping that this second wave of money that comes through, they'll be able to, to tap into that um, for sure. And if, if there's anybody out there that didn't get it or didn't get approved, I would suggest to get the application in and check every single day with your banker. Um, 
and, and so that so that they don't miss the second wave of funding. It's hard to add too much to that. That was that was good, um, and I, I agree. Um, I think that it, uh, it's going to be hard to get back to it uh, to our our old normal, especially quick. I don't think they're just going to open up the, the doors one day and say, "Okay, everybody, just rush in and it's all back to normal." I think it's going to have to be a wave on wave on wave of we're going to roll this out, and it's, this is what rolling it out means. It doesn't just mean we're opening up the doors. It could mean you know, tables in restaurants may be spaced differently. I, I don't, I don't know, um, but I don't, I don't think it's going to just be a welcome to the buffet line and everybody can stand over here and wait to get food. You know, I think it's going to be a whole different look. Um, but I, I, I would agree with uh, with Andrew on on his points that he made on that as well. Yeah, same. I think too. There's a lot more to consider than just you know, the revenue that these companies are losing, but also the workforce and how we've had to support our families has shifted. So with kids not in school, you know, and parents, you know, are now without that ability for basically, you know, their childcare for the day for, I mean, that's a lot of kids that are home right now without other ways to homeschool them for the throughout the end of the, the school year and so how you open all that back up and say okay well here's a whole bunch more responsibility oh and now we need everybody to just go back to life as normal and that's a big that's a big shift and so um yeah i'll be interested to see how that rolls out but i think just taking in consideration i would say that to the task force take into consideration you know, every person that it impacts all the way around the board and, um, you know, and then weigh that against the benefits. What is, what's the benefit against that impact? And so that's a hard, that's a hard uh, question, but Andrew probably did the best job. Well, one thing I'll add to that, that along those same lines that I've been contemplating as of late is being that, you know, as Jay said, you know, we probably won't return to the new the, the norm. There will be a new norm. Yeah. And I think it's made everybody aware that change can happen and it's never happened in our lifetime. I mean, it's never happened. Yeah. And I think people will become more conservative. Um, one concern on my part is that in our industry, it's, you know, discretionary income or, you know, they don't have to wash their car. They, they can, they can wash it at home. Although I don't suggest they do that, but, um, so, so I think that you'll have a small percentage of, of the consumer that will change their spending habits. And I think when it comes to restaurants or when it comes to even car washes or, or, or businesses like those, um, I think we will witness change. We'll witness spending patterns that will be much different than they've been in the past. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, um, well, we still have some time for some questions. If anybody uh, has an additional question to ask, um, I know that there was a, a comment um, that somebody said, um, I like the discussion of doing it in waves, um, opening up again, and limited functions where crowd control can be managed. Um, that's if you can get everybody to control themselves and, and manage their own uh, distances and all of that. So um, do any of you have anything to offer or, or add um, that you have gone through that you want somebody else to share uh, or you want to share with somebody else in case they go through a similar instance or um, experience with a customer, uh, anything like that. I don't guess I have a specific, um, a specific shift in that in in regards to that, you know, just like what a customer's gone through directly. But some things that I've seen in my um, network is I definitely have seen a change in communication. So, um, you know, whenever you're attending networking events, like the chamber networking events or things like that, that have shifted a bit, it's been very cool to be able to do a business after hours virtually and a lot of them have been really neat if you've attended one um, if you haven't i encourage it because it's it's pretty cool to just get together and and even the first one 
we all came together as business owners and we prayed for each other and for the community. And that's not something that would have ever happened in a business after hours typically, right? I mean, right. it's a little different atmosphere, but it, it shifted that communication. And then I've seen some podcasts that are popping up. Um, one is the Phil and Corey show. It's on Facebook. These are two people, um, Corey Myers, who owns Love It Consulting, and then Philip Robb, who owns Robb Technology Group. They started a podcast where they're interviewing small business owners, and they're talking through uh, some of these types of things. Master Networks is another one. That's a networking group, like a referral group um, that is coming together. They're still meeting every single week with you know, 40, 50 people who are coming in and still doing elevator pitches, still trying to make those networking connections, that kind of stuff, I think is really cool that it's not just our business and like our specific business model, but actually seeing like community things also shifting to a virtual space. It's pretty neat. Okay, well, um, if we don't have any additional questions, again, um, thank you all for your time today. Um, if nobody else has anything to add, uh, we can wrap up. We'll give you a few minutes back to your day. Um, thank you for joining us again. Um, please watch uh, your Monday memo. Um, if you are a chamber member or employed with a chamber member, uh, you'll receive a Monday memo every Monday morning. Um, and that has all of our upcoming webinars. We've got a community prayer gathering coming up. Uh, we've got um, a some updates from the comptroller and the um, attorney general's office. So those are some great ones to look for. Uh, we do have one coming up first thing tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Um, and that is creative ways to communicate your brand during COVID-19. Uh, guests will be Danya Butler with Design Envy, Pam Sharp from Price Group, and Riker Taylor from Wonder Tree. Um, we will share the link here on the side to the um, event tomorrow morning to register. You'll register the same way you did for today's event. Um, and um, we will have another installment of keeping businesses and customers um, connected next uh, Tuesday at 2 p.m. same time, um, same day. Um, so if you uh, have any questions on that, please don't hesitate to contact any of us at the Chamber. Um, on behalf of the uh, Lubbock Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and staff, we thank all of you for being with us today and joining. Jay, Andrew, Amy, thank you for your time and thank you for your input and keep doing what you guys are doing. It's fantastic and we appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Amy. Thank the Chamber. Thank you.